Hello everyone, I just saw this video that's right behind me and in this video Google introduced their agent development kit. Without further ado, I want to see what it's about and I want to teach you what it's about. So let's go to the blackboard to give you a little bit of an intro. So this ADK is basically standing for agent development kit. It is pretty intuitive. It basically means that it's a kit for developing agents, specifically AI agents. So Google claims that this ADK will be model agnostic. That means that you can use any models to run your AI agents, not just their own Gemini models. It could be anything that you want to choose from or even your own model if you can integrate it over here. And next thing that they've told us is that it will be deployment agnostic, which means that once your AI agent has been developed, you will want to deploy it somewhere, especially if you want to monetize it, sell it to someone. So what you do is you can deploy it either on your own servers or you can deploy it on GCP or any other cloud platform like AWS, there's Azure. All right, so you can do that. So it's deployment agnostic. It is built in such a way that you can deploy it anywhere you want it to be. And the next goal is to have it have as much interoperability as possible. That basically implies that this kit is going to be quite intuitive to use, very, very easy to understand. And we'll see that in action in just a few moments. And what they want to do is have it as easy to integrate with other tools, other services, other APIs, other AI models as possible. And in its uh, at its core, it uses model context protocol. And that is something I've talked about in one of the other videos. So if you don't uh, know what it is, I suggest you go check it out. It's not needed for this video, but at the same time, it is very essential to understand how it makes AI agents work. And you could just think of it as a prequel to this video and it will be a fun, fun video for you to watch. So go check it out and come back here. Another goal over here is not only to help build AI agents via this kit, it is also to self evaluate that will help make again, making these agents easier, less room for error. All right, so whatever error they are, the kit will intend to fix it on its own or communicate it to you as efficiently as possible. So that is another goal. Now in this video, what we're going to do is try it hands on. So you don't have to look any other place for it. We're going to make a very small project to get started just so that you can get up and running on this ADK. We're going to have this root agent defined in our project. That root agent is what we will be talking to via text. We give text instructions. These instructions will be related to getting time at a particular location in the world. So that's time over here or weather. That is the scope of this project for this video. Maybe we'll expand it in the videos to come. For this video, we want it to give us time of the specified location and the weather of the specified location. And that's the goal. So without further ado, let's see the project that I've set up for you. All you need for this project is have to have Python installed on your device. You need to have an IDE like VS code that's open on my screen over here. Next, what you want to do is set up your Python environment. How do you do it? You set up your virtual environment using this command. You simply run it. It will give you a .venv file as I have over here. And this project is already set up. I could code it line by line, but that will just take up more time. I want it to be as efficient for you as possible. And I'm going to, but I'm going to walk through every bit of this project so that you don't have any trouble setting it up. All right. So next, what we'll do is activate this virtual environment that we've just created. So there are different options to do that. I've written down the commands for Mac and Linux over here. I'm using Windows command line. So this is the one for me. If you use PowerShell, it's also listed over here. All right. So in this command line, you simply run that and then run your terminal again. This will give you .vnv prefix in your terminal, which will indicate that you are now in your virtual environment. All right. And then you install your Google ADK. This is a Python library. You need to have pip, uh, which should hopefully be installed with your Python installation. So we will install the ADK library. It's already installed for me. So what I'm going to do next is assume that I've already run this command to check if it's installed properly. Let's just run ADK help. This will give us the list of commands that this ADK has for us. So it's given us a bunch of commands that are available for us and that is all we need, but that's for later. For now, we want to actually write some code. We want to get into our project. I've already written this code, but I'm going to walk you through it as I said. So we need to have a parent folder, which is this Google ADK intro that I have over here in that a project, let's call it the multi-tool agent. That's 
a folder that we're going to create. In it, we'll have three main files. That is the init.py file, agent.py and .env file. So our init.py file is very simple. It's going to initialize our project, but just with this one line of code. So we'll simply import everything from our agents that is available to us over here. Next, what we'll do is specify our environment variables. What do I mean by environment variables? Our environment variables basically contain all the variables that are going to be used by the rest of the code and such as our weather API credentials. So if I'm asking for the weather conditions of a certain city, I am going to call the weather API. So if I'm just go back here, I'm going to use an, a library over here that is present on my device. But for weather, I'm going to call an external API. All right, so I'll specify the API key in my environment. That's what will be present in my .env file. So I can't show you this environment file right now because it has my API keys, but I can show you the example file. So it has these three variables, weather API key and a couple of more variables. So my API key will be specified over here. This is just a placeholder. Of course, it's not the actual API key. And that is the variable I'm using, which we will see in the code in a few moments. Then we have this Google Gen AI use Vertex AI. We are not using Vertex AI for this project right now. So I specified it to false. It's also the same case in my .env file over here as it is. Then I have my Google API key because I need to pass text instructions. I need the LLM, which is going to be Gemini over here. I'll just write that down as well. This is going to be processed via my Gemini model. And the API key used to interact with that is specified over here. All right. So once that is done, we can now move on to the code that is specified in my agent.py file. Let's start with the imports. I have my date time and zone info and another module over here. This is used for my time zone information, time zone related information. And we'll see that uh, in a second. Then I have the imports needed for my Google ADK to work. I have the OS library and the .env dependency over here, which will be used to extract the environment variables from my .env file. Then the requests library, which is used to make API calls to my Gemini API, to my weather API or any other external API that I choose to connect in this video or in the videos to come. So I just load all these environment variables. I start with defining my root agent next. My root agent, uh, let's give it any name, right? It is going to use a Gemini 2.0 flash model. It's pretty lightweight and you can get started with it fairly easily. It doesn't take up a lot of tokens. I'm going to just put up a sample description over here and the instructions. These instructions will be used to basically give some context to the LLM so that it can extract information from my text instructions properly. So I say that you are a helpful agent who can answer user questions about the time and weather in a city. And this is all the part that we need to worry about. In the future videos, I'm going to expand it to give my outputs in the chosen language and even give a voice response. So if you are interested in that, you stay tuned for the other videos and maybe give it a subscribe, press the bell icon to help stay notified. Next is my tools list, which is basically specifying the functions, get weather and get current time uh, so that this agent knows which tools are available for it to get the time information and the weather information. All right. So let's dig in these tools one by one. So in my get weather function, which takes a city as an input and a dictionary as an output, we start with getting our API key for my weather API. How do I get this weather API key? I simply go to weatherapi.com. I sign up. You can just go to pricing, get started and you just put in your details. It's a free API. You get the API key, come back to VS code, put it in your .env file. I'll just show you the example file, initialize a variable, paste the key over here. It will extract it from the same variable. And if that API key is not found by my code, it will simply throw an error and that's fine. It's just a fallback. The API documentation of weather API says that this is the API you need to call to get the current weather information of a city. And you have to pass the city name over here 
or some other details that you can see, see in the documentation latitude longitude or something else and my api key so that it can identify who is making the request now now i will use the requests library to make this request to the base url of weather api and i'll pass in my params i'll get my response in the form of json i will extract certain fields from this json response that i have that are my current condition which is the weather condition in the city the temperature in celsius temperature in fahrenheit and the location that i have of course specified that's also sent as part of the response i am not making this up on my own this is just the response that i receive if it's a predefined format i am simply extracting this information you can maybe try to print this api the response like this to see what the response is actually about and why i am checking in the current field the condition field followed by the text field all right so you need to have a basic grasp of python to understand how this is working very very fundamental so we have then our whatever is returned i return the formatted response that the weather in whatever location is having the so having a certain condition with the temperature in celsius the temperature in fahrenheit and if my request fails for some reason i simply throw an error all right that's what i do for my weather and then we have my current time i use the i use this zone info library for that it does not have information of all the time zones but it has quite a few time zones that we can see we'll see both cases when it has the certain time zone when it does not have the certain the specified time zone so what i'll do is i'll simply get my city as an input in the form of a string i will have it a form i will have a bit of formatting over here so let's say if i'm sending new york over here it will turn that into new york all right because this is the format the zone info library expects me to send it in so we have these matching zones that basically means whatever city i'm entering try to find the matching time zone for it so search for all the available search for my time zone in all the available time zones that is basically what i'm doing over here and store it in this list matching zones if we don't have anything in my matching zones i simply throw an error that this information is not available for me we'll see that in action as well by the way so stay tuned till we see the output then we get the time zone identifier we finally get the time zone converted to a certain date format and we format it that the current time in the city is whatever it is and we return that over here that's all my agent can do at the moment i'll expand this of course like i said for my chosen language and maybe even give a voice response in the videos to come for now we've already seen the list of commands that are available to us so adk gives us the chance to explore this using the cli or it can create a server for us or it even gives us an inbuilt ui that we can just put on our browser and start typing our instructions so let's go with that option for that we need to have oh sorry for that we need to have adk web which is the last option over here it will spin up a fast api server and put it up on a certain port which we'll see shortly once that is done we will then visit that particular website one thing i uh, haven't mentioned that though is how do i get this api key over here because whenever i have to put an instruction as i mentioned it will ask gemini for it how will it ask gemini till it doesn't have the api key to call gemini right so i simply go to my ai studio over here and over there you can create an api key very very simply just copy it and paste it you can just use this get api key option create your api key paste it in your env file in this google api key variable because that is what is the format that they've given to us in the official documentation now we have all the components set up for us what we simply need to do next is run our project and i've already run it it's on port 8000 so let's go over to our browser and check this out so over here we have this ui given to us by google i have not written any part in it it is plain built in ui on the top left we have a drop down for the different agents that we may have in our environment i just have one over here multi tool agent which is also the name of my folder if you noticed so select that if you have more than one agents 
and we start with our instructions by asking it what is the time in Tokyo so it calls my function it gets the response and it tells me that time in Tokyo right now is 8 40 4 p.m. so if I just go over here hit refresh it is 8 45 now so it basically changed just as I was talking because there were only 12 seconds left so it's perfectly accurate as we can see over here then next I'm going to get the weather in New York It does the same thing, it calls the get weather function, gets the response and gives the output to us in the specified format. What if I try to ask it for the time in New Delhi? Now I know that this is a case which is not covered by my library, the zone info library. But it still calls the function, gets the response and it tells me that it does not have the time zone information for New Delhi. Uh, something that we have already specified in our case over here. All right, so that's how you handle errors for pieces of information that your service may not have. And that's what we're doing right now. What I want to do next is translate this result to a different language. That is something I'll cover in the next video by using this Gemini 2.5 model over here. And I'm going to basically make an explicit call. I can still do it right now. If I basically ask it to tell me the weather in New Delhi if I ask it to translate that in Hindi it cannot translate that in Hindi this is a problem I want to solve all right so I am going to integrate another tool which is going to call my Gemini API explicitly and then translate it to whatever language I want it to translate it to. I could probably use a Google Translate API for it but I want to show you how you can actually use LLMs very very directly by making API calls and that's something I'll cover in the next video so stay tuned and follow for more.